Hi, how are you doing? Without delay, let's return to the problem of the object on a hemisphere. In that problem, I applied Lagrange equations and found the differential equation of motion. The angular acceleration was proportional to the sine of the angle theta. I also found the reaction force from the surface of the object. This latter I did by considering all degrees of freedom without constraint. I then applied Lagrange equations to both theta and r, and then I applied a constraint. I assumed a potential and found a force related to that potential. Actually, I found two equations, one that was the equation of motion for the variable theta and the other which was the one for the normal force. The force that imposes a constraint, which in this problem was that the object is always at the distance r from the center of the hemisphere, that is, the object is in contact with that surface. This, as a matter of fact, is equivalent to the method called Lagrange undetermined multipliers. This method implies writing Lagrange equations in this new form. The first two terms are the Lagrange equations we already know, and the third term includes this lambda times the derivative of f with respect to the coordinate q. f is a constraint equation that needs to be zero. In this problem, it can be written as r minus r equal to zero. Lambda is the force of constraint related to that potential. This method automatically will give us the force related to each of the constraints in the system. If the system is a 3D system, then the Lagrangian will depend on the three variables. But if the system is limited to move along a specific 2D area or just a path, then we will have one or two constraints. We will apply Lagrange equations with multipliers to the three coordinates and we will find the equation of motion and the constrained forces. Let's see this in the same problem. We already found the Lagrangian considering both r and theta. The constraint here is f equal to r minus capital R. Remember that the constraints are equal to zero. This constraint only depends on r, so we will only have the partial of f with respect to r, which is 1. From Lagrange equations with multipliers applied to theta, there is no multiplier term here, as the constraint does not depend on theta. Solving this equation gives this differential equation. I did just this a couple of videos ago. For Lagrange equations with multipliers for the variable r, we have now the following equation. Which, rewritten, gives that the undetermined multiplier related to the variable r is just this, which happens to be the normal force as we proved a couple of videos ago. So now you can opt to use the original Lagrange equations to find the equation of motion or Lagrange equations with undetermined multipliers to also find the forces of constraint. And this relates to Newton's laws. Now we also get those forces we didn't want to think about in the first place. May the science be with you.